Hi everyone, welcome to the live concept art session that used to be called uh, Concept Democracy or something like that. But we figured that democracy doesn't always, well, you know. <laughs> so yes, we have an agenda, as you can see on the screen. Uh, I'm Baseman Ben, doing that for the 10th time or something like that, probably. And here is a CCP Pointy Bits, who is doing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, his real name is Kasim. He's been on the team uh, for seven months, seven months yeah. now. So we're going to see what he's capable of live and not in the protected shell of the studio and all his buddies and the art director and so on. So mm. ta-da! Go for it. So yeah, we were, of course, and uh, the description of the session kind of uh, gave you a hint that it might be democracy, but democracy has an agenda, and the agenda today is going to be... A modules legion capital ship. Yes, there have been discussions about making new capitals and, you know, pirate factions and so on. So we thought, why not giving it a shot right now and, you know, being ready for when shit hit the fan for the art team. Yeah. And you're going to help us if you can or if you want. Or just enjoy the show. I don't know. So what did you have in mind? Uh, How do you approach Mordu? So basically, I wanted a really flat silhouette for this guy, kind of based off the bar guess. So I have this kind of baseline silhouette um, that I prepared earlier, which is kind of cheating. Um, and what, what makes it more do? Uh, basically, that it looks like a pancake, mostly. <laughs> uh, no, it's just quite like low radar cross-section kind of shapes, uh, very based on like stealth fighters and stuff. But it's, it's kind of weird for a capital ship, making it look like a jet fighter. So there's a lot of stuff up in the air about that. OK, so let's try to make it look less than a, like a yeah. jet fighter then. Yeah, so basically we're open to suggestions about what we should add to this guy, and then we're going to slowly flesh it out. Fins. Fins. Spikes. Spikes. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's Racing just get spikes. it over with the spikes right away so it's done. Uh, yeah, spikes are easy. We do a bit of this, a bit of that. Yeah. There you go. Now it's a Sanchez Modu Legion Capital. We're going to do hybrid pirate factions. Don't tell CCP Larrikin. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Fins, I guess. How big do we want these fins? Big. Big. More like a, less like a stealth fighter and more like a stealth bomber. Like the same thing. Definitely different. Um, yeah. I don't know why I'm doing this in a really dumb way. Apparently, I'm not very good at art. You just started. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> learning how to not be bad. When I was your age. <laughs> how long ago was that, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> so the fun part at that stage when you design stuff is that when you're still working with silhouette and thumbnails, everything is still possible. You don't yeah. have yet the the art director too obsessed about the details and the, the yeah. new graphics programmer bothering you about the size of the texture and... You're not worrying about like if this little tiny bit of lighting is working just quite right, if the gradients are all good, if colors are good. Um, but it's also really scary at this stage because there's so many possibilities and you're kind of paranoid about where it could go and if you're doing the right thing, which I'm definitely not doing right now, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What else do people want to add to it? There's a few fins. I think if you would start a bit to Definable. put some lines on that, okay. you could maybe have a better idea of what to add, what to remove. Yeah. And if we run out of IDs, I'm sure the art director is somewhere in the room. Yeah, I'm no? sure. <laughs> maybe. At least we have it's like a good chunk of the art team, so... <laughs> If you need help. Oh, we should get them all up on stage. Live art direction from the uh, art team.
So yeah, this is the part where it's scary because you see something in the design and then you kind of mess it up at this stage really, really easy because you figure out that it doesn't actually work in 3D space. Which is why smart people usually lay out like a perspective grid first, but we're just going to YOLO it. Does it, make a big <laughs> Does it make a big difference for you? Because you do use a lot of 3D in your concept phase, right? Yeah, like 3D usually, and shapes. usually I would take this into 3D before I start doing this. Um, obviously, we're not going to do that today because me pushing around polygons isn't very fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I would generally take this into 3D after you know a few lines on top of this and defining some general forms and just see where it goes in 3D. Very often you realize things that work in 2D really don't work in 3D, or they look really, really boring. Uh, what kind of tail? Like a manta ray fan. Like a manta ray fan. Okay. The head? No, the head's like here. Oh no, I'm pressing wrong buttons, I'm panicking. Uh, no, the head's like here, clearly. <laughs> Do you guys not see what I see? <laughs> no. Yeah, it, it's kind of just a bad guess with the tail now. Um, but that's You're fine. You're not done with the tail, that's not like a... I mean, what do we want from the like tail? more like a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> what goldfish do you keep? A French goldfish. <laughs> uh, sorry? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I could use some more spikes. Stealth spikes. Yeah, it's fine. Like we said, maybe it's a hybrid capital. Maybe it's a laser bar guess because missiles don't work properly. That was actually a funny bug. We couldn't get missiles to render for a lot of uh, the stuff we made for FanFest this week. So we had to go with no missiles, ren uh, no weapons rendering on any ships, just to be fair. That's also why uh, you guys had like a marketing image of like a laser rock or something, like a razor ra uh, laser raven. I am really just drawing a bar guess now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's interesting. I'll say, let's just erase this bit. Maybe it has like a moon well. Yeah, maybe it's a carrier. Maybe this is the hangar bay or something. So when you're at the studio designing a ship, do you have so many voices in your head? <laughs> with all kind of different accents and yeah, weird yeah. ideas going on? Asking me to put spikes in. One of them sits next to me. Uh, I think he's in the crowd. I think, is he? Blame it on the voices. Yeah. No, but like at the office, you hear a lot of different opinions about stuff. So you have to be very convicted as to what you're going to go for until the art director says something. Then obviously he's. Is uh, the art director here? <laughs> Koki. He's here. That's good. Can are we bring we, you are on we stage? Fine so far. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, because these guys are meant to be kind of galente. Where is that? There it is. I'm very bad at layers, so I often lose things. Oh, what, on these guys? Okay. Um, possibly. I'll take that into consideration. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the idea with this little guy, like a nice little isometric bridge, sort of homeworldy style. But, well, I don't know. In area for 
<laughs> yeah, billboards on ships. That's our next uh, monetization technique. <laughs> At least 700 of them. <laughs> hmm? Oh god, this is terrible. We kind of lost the pancake thing. Yeah, we did. Right. It was it, the tail completely threw me, but I, I wasn't expecting a tail. I don't give ships tails. I give them like pointy bits on the front. I think even though you're still working on the silhouette, I think it would be good to put like a few details to kind of mm -hmm. to scale the thing. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I think it needs more mass, to be honest. Like somewhere for fighters to come out of, you know? But. <laughs> this is the worst ship I've ever done. <laughs> uh, I was so not prepared for today. Can, can we go to the one that I did earlier? Sorry? Can we go to the one I did earlier? It's your show. <laughs> Wait, no. I'm completely terrible with layers. Don't ever base anything off what I do. There we go. This was what I was trying to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just use this guy as a basis. Yeah, like uh, this guy actually kind of has that. Yeah, so this guy kind of has this um, like side strip where we were gonna have like aircraft carrier lines and stuff coming out of and then the little hangar bays. Turning into a frigate, I think. So. Yeah, I mean that's what happens when you add wings onto things. <laughs> uh, Sorry? Uh, can I do that to kind of sell? Well, so like adding the drone base here and stuff? Yeah, obviously that could be a cool like warp animation. Um, so what, these guys would basically go up or down into this, yeah? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just going to flesh these guys out on that warp animation then. And figure that out. Buttons. Buttons are really hard. So I mean, what I imagine is like a tiny little hangar bay here, and then like kind of runway here, and then this entire thing would kind of just fold up like this, like a camper van. That's a, the camper vans are a great thing to base spaceships off of. They're really efficient. Um, yeah, but I don't think I'll get around to that. Maybe in future. Maybe when uh, we do Mordu's Legion fights. So, yeah. Um. Uh, what if I put bananas? I mean, it's a space fighter banana. What do you expect? It needs to mount like an engine. Uh, let's, I mean, what would a realistic banana be? We haven't even established scale for this guy. That size? Are you guys comfortable with that being scale? And trails. 
trails from the from the bananas. Okay. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> I can just imagine the art director is sat in the back, it's like tearing his hair out right now. Yeah, definitely. Straight from 2D, not even 3D. <laughs> oh, I wish I. Uh, I mean, this would be essentially wider. So, hmm, I guess scale-wise, I would probably say this guy is. Hmm. Actually, I don't know. Maybe like, how big is a carrier? Like two point four? Um, maybe like one point eight. Oh God, lines are terrible. Uh, yeah, let's say this guy's like one point eight. Um, but yeah, I mean, if this guy is 1.8, I would say he's significantly wider than most of the other carriers. Um, yeah. But I mean, most of the carrier is about two kilometers, I think. So if this guy is, you know, eh, I wouldn't even be able to say what size this guy is. This is beyond me. I would have to measure this kind of stuff in 3D. halfway through, so I think it's time to put some details and yeah, shadows yeah. and things. Some shadows. Uh, let's discard most of this and go back to the original sketch then just start flushing that guy out. So yeah, if I started wanting to add forms to this guy, it's just a case of doing a lot of lasso tools and bringing out forms like this. Let's not do a rainbow gradient, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> uh, it's like just very, very quick lasso tools like this to bring out forms. It's probably not how lighting works at all. This is what I was saying I was scared of earlier. That was all on the wrong layer. That is terrible. Uh, YOLO, let's do this. So usually when you work on a ship, like in real conditions, <laughs> when you start to work yeah. on like silhouettes like that and thumbnails and so on, at what stage do you start to really see it in your head? Um, or do the design itself kind of moves along and you just follow also what's happening? I mean, it kind of depends on the ship. Like, this one is actually very hard because there's not a lot of 3D information, which is kind of what's difficult with modus. Um, but with something like Caldari, where you can add a lot more verticality and a lot more 3D forms, you t I tend to see stuff a lot quicker. Um, especially things like Galente, which is so you know, 3D in every aspect. And and then you see like little things like these lines, you might see some form that's coming out just like this. 
the soul curve so you get modules and then like little recesses and stuff but basically you just look at lines and you think about forms that you can pull out of them so a lot of it is just really big improv so usually I would uh, have this guy and then I would copy paste him around like a few dozen times and just experiment on all of them doing this kind of thing but we don't really have the time for that but that would basically mean that I would have like 30 different possibilities and see which one has the best sort of strengths in certain places depending on what we're going for so like this guy I don't know he doesn't look too much like a carrier to me, so I would probably like cast this guy to the side and then start playing with more that look like a carrier and maybe use this guy as a dreadnought or to inform a dreadnought design later. So what's a bit difficult about these guys is they have a lot of very subtle curves which don't work well with lassos. You have to spend a lot of time working into them to make them actually like work with the kind of subtle curves that Modus has. They're very in between Galente and Caldari in terms of aesthetic. So they have those weird faceted edges and then they also have a lot of really subtle curves in between is really hard to capture very quickly. And yeah, I'll just bounce around the concept like this, basically. Uh, there's not a lot of focus at this stage, because we're just seeing what happens. But there's not a lot of going into a certain area and detailing out at this stage. Usually after I do all this stuff, I do like a really fine line pass over it. And at that stage, I'd probably like take it into 3D and start messing around and usually pass it to a 3D artist first and figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, and generally the design will change quite a lot at that stage. Something like this is basically intended for the art director to be able to judge it really, really quickly and just see what he wants to see. Um, and sort of inform him of the design and that he makes decisions after that based off this. You start noticing a lot of perspective problems at this stage. And little errors like this guy.
Did you ever design stuff on paper? <laughs> um, a couple of times. Usually go on post-it notes. Have those all around my desk. When I first started, um, there was a competition to design the best Tech 2 variant of the Dominix on a post-it note. Uh, a lot of that involved drawing Benjamin's face onto the front of a Dominix. <laughs> we actually had a great one. Um, it was basically a sea lion Dominix. I'm still convinced we should do that as a skin. Uh, I mean, they would be kind of behind here. Like, Modus has really hidden kind of engines, like baffled engines. Um, but I can do a quick sketch of what I would think they would look like. So. If you imagine that's this top guy here, with these little ears, I guess. Um, I think Vargas kind of has these little boxy things, but I'm not sure I like that. So I would probably do maybe something with a cool little door that opens. So. so if you imagine like a warp animation where these go up and down, uh, to basically focus like the little booster trails. Like something really basic like that. But it's hard with something that's a capital ship, like establishing the size that these things should be. Um, and that usually takes us to having like an actual 3D model and seeing how big things should be. Of all time. Are we talking just Eve or? Uh, that I've made. Um, probably the Griffin redesign because Griffins are great. Um, now I'm pretty proud of the Caldari Force Auxiliary. Um, that's the only one that I've done which is coming out at the moment. Uh, these guys. Um, yeah, generally we'll place hard points on everything, including carriers, just in case someone makes a really weird game design decision later and decides carriers should have missiles or something. So we'll generally add like hard points and try and filter them into the design in a way that makes sense. So uh, when I was doing this sketch and I had a big reference thing, I had one of like a Typhoon submarine and it had these really cool launch bays which had these weird geometric design. And in terms of like texture detail, that's something that I drop in later of these tessellating kind of circles that all mix in with this cool boxy design. Um, but it's really hard to remember quite what it was. It's like, um, I mean, that's just actually a bear face, but it kind of looked like that. It was like intermeshing bare faces, which was really interesting when it opened up. Okay, so those were basically the same question, which is kind of nice. Um, I mean, it depends. Usually I would prefer to look at real life because if you're looking at other people's work, then everything is kind of going to be reminiscent of their work, which is kind of bad if you want something that's kind of unique and iconic. Um, I really like looking at toys, like, well, not toys, <laughs> um, old model kits from movies and stuff and figuring out like the little tank parts and stuff that they've reused to make spaceships. If you look at a lot of the early Star Wars stuff, they're really great for that. 
and I like basically just figuring out how I can make real life reference and stuff work in a new way to make things like that. But I definitely, I have a giant folder of other people's work as well, which is always great because you don't really look at their design, but you see how they're applying that kind of stuff. So like when you see someone who's doing sci-fi soldiers and he basically puts a toaster on the head and it just looks fine. Any fantasy ships need spikes? I mean, it'll get spikes. We'll put the spikes on at the end. We'll have a vote where the spikes will go. There's a tradition in fantasy. Every ship needs to have spikes. Yeah. I mean, I also want to give it like headlights or something. <laughs> like that. I think that's actually kind of great, like this little face is forming now. That would make great uh, yeah, if, if we actually do this, I want this as like a cosmetic skin now. Maybe we should ask the art director that one. No, I don't think I can answer that here, but maybe at the art panel tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Then like, I won't get in trouble for saying something. Yeah, at the art panel tomorrow, we're going to show, of course, things that we've been working on that you already know about, and also new things that you've been, we've been a bit like thinking about. And of course, more questions and answers about like future plans and so on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you look at the Caldari Force, it actually took for, uh, someone four months to realize, but there's a giant 07 salute on the side of the Caldari Force auxiliary. Which isn't a huge Easter egg, but yeah, there's a, like a ton of Easter eggs on a ton of ships that people haven't realized. Um, I actually don't think so on that one. I mean, that would be spoilers. Maybe you'll find something. Maybe I don't want to tell you. I, I actually don't know, but the artist who did it is sitting in the front row, so... I don't think it was. I don't think he'd do that. Uh, so I'm basically self-taught. Um, what I did before I came here was I went to university for 3D and basically realized I didn't really enjoy the 3D aspect. So I dropped out and realized I really enjoyed just drawing and designing stuff. So I basically spent two years like living at home teaching myself to draw. And then I ended up with this job because I tricked them all into thinking I can draw. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's interesting. We got in touch with Kasim through uh, some like redesign ideas that he had posted online, and uh, yeah. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at this stage, I would generally take it into three D. So I am just kind of noodling around here, but I think like. You kind of have most of the forms here. You have most of the ideas. I would actually start looking into things like warp animations. So I mean, you guys can feel free to call out warp animations or things that would animate generally. No, I think it should actually stick out more. Oh yeah, no, it should definitely. It should. Uh, No, when it goes into warp, because it's going really, really fast, it needs to do this. And like bend underneath it and flap around. No, I think it should uh, go back and forth, basically. It's like a dog running at that point. Maybe the eyes close because it's really happy that it's going fast. 
A party hat? Yeah, sure. I mean, it'll cost you like 750 over them. But. <laughs> that covers the spiky part as well at the same yeah. time. <laughs> if we get party hats for Aura, we'll buy it. We'll buy all of it. I'm going to hold you to that. When I get back on Monday, I'm proposing that. And you get a free monocle with it. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, let's give it a monocle. <laughs> I mean, this guy needs to be a top. Hat now, though, if we're if we're going to keep in terms of like character. <laughs> he needs a watch as well. You guys are getting greedy. <laughs> I just wanted to draw a spaceship. <laughs> um, um, he looks too cute to have a spike. The spike is really threatening. Maybe we make him angry, then he can have a spike. Yeah, I think like this is an this is a different skin now, so let's just let's make him let's give him an angry skin. Great. Where do we want the spike, though? In the middle of the back. Yeah. In the middle in the back. Oh. They come up when it's time to fight. I actually think that would be a great weapon system in EVE, like Robot Wars. <laughs> you fly up to a ship and then you activate and spike shoot out and impale them. Oh, that, that's actually a really good point. You should also shoot fire. <laughs> that's not fire. That's not fire. Looks more like bombing. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe that's its special attack. When it goes into siege, it actually just vomits on people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would have to be really appropriate. Little red eyes. I think it needs more spikes. Huh? It needs some other back in case people like sneak up on it. Yeah, no, I'm sold on this. What, what does the art director at the back think? <laughs> but I think one day we'll have enough uh, concepts from all those stations at FanFest to make a brand new game just with the concept that we've made there. It's going to be amazing. A spiky game. Yeah. Where ships have feelings. <laughs> It'll be like Tamagotchi. <laughs> I think we're going to have to finish the session in three minutes. In three minutes, okay. Which means that you have three minutes to finish it. Uh, finish it? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> He's so confused. <laughs> He, he kind of reminds me of the evil villain from Super Meat Boy now.
This is the most professional shading job ever. I think he needs a lollipop. <laughs> oh no, where's his mouth though? How do you draw a lollipop? I've never drawn a lollipop on a spaceship. <laughs> I don't know, I think he's a slim cigarette man. Cigars are too overdone for evil spaceship villains. I mean, he's a big guy. <laughs> what color is whiskey? Brown? I think we have just time for the whiskey. <laughs> uh, it's the worst whiskey I've ever seen. And that's right. There we go. Um, what are we doing with the eyes? Oh, is the whiskey a person? Is he drinking his little animated spaceship whiskey? This is terrible. I just can't remember why did we hire him. <laughs> <laughs> it was another Cassim, right? I, I think we can ship that. I mean, Wednesday, maybe. <laughs> it still needs to go through QA. In fact, I think there's QA in the room. What do you guys think? Oh? Huh? There we go. That's the QA approval. <laughs> Yeah, point releases. Yeah, no, I think it's good. It looks fantastic. And th we're I running out of time, so unfortunately, you won't be able to <laughs> pursue this fantastic design. Mm. But we're. It's okay, I'm sure you guys mm -hmm. will let me spend more time on this. I one think one like day. every year, we can promise that it's going to end up in game, yeah. right? At some Definitely. point. We've got a few of those. Uh, I don't know. Name. Let's have a quick poll for that. Someone shout out ship name. All at once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amer American what? Pancakes. American pancakes. Ship face. Yeah. Ship faced. <laughs> Okay, I guess that concludes this uh, amazing session. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kasim. I was speechless most of the time because that, mm -hmm. I've just never, never expected you to go that far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work for yes. 45 minutes. You have a bright future <laughs> ahead of you. Uh, thank you very much, and sorry about that. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs>